Daily Groceries Co-op is a 1,300 square foot space in Athens, Georgia. So we have 1,000 retail and then 300, which includes our office space, our deli prep space, and our back office storage. So super, super small. Um, and we started in 1992 as the grocery stores began to close downtown and move more towards the suburbs. And um, the original co-founders really just wanted to have a place that they could buy an apple downtown. And so the apple is the co-op's symbol and sort of what we built ourselves around to be this accessible place where the downtown community could walk, bike, come through and be able to get fresh produce and deli needs and other things. Um, so in starting in 1992, um, we initially incorporated, um, I think just as an LLC, but we eventually reincorporated as a co-op in Vermont because in the state of Georgia, the only legal co-ops are farmers co-ops and electrical co-ops. So Georgia as a state didn't even have a le legal structure for a consumer owned enterprise. And, you know, I would say we kind of bumped along in a very sweet, um, maybe hippie-ish, sort of volunteer run, kind of random-ish, lovely, but definitely clubhouse. You know, we called it funky, many people called it dirty <laughs> um, space. And while that was sort of fun and sweet and beautiful, we sort of bumped along for 20 years and we began what I sort of term um, as the hero's journey. So it's this sort of Joseph Campbell archetypal monomyth where our co-op was going along and then began to realize that things weren't going quite so well. And, you know, we had little indicators, you know, reputation in the community, um, as, as a clubhouse, an exclusive clubhouse. There's some flooding outside of our front door. Um, you know, old, tiny building, things beginning to fall apart, our balance sheet not looking so good, and then also some other truths about our community. We have a very high poverty rate in athens Clark County, but a relatively low unemployment rate. So we were recognizing that many people were working, but they weren't making living wages. There was a lot of underemployment and that what our community really, really needed, in addition to, you know, a funky, fun place to shop, was they really needed a job creator. And so we sort of began this hero's journey where you sort of fall into the underworld and you go from what you know into the realm of what you don't know. And, you know, it's scary and a little bit painful. And you start, um, you know, all of the weapons and shields and armor that worked in the known world, you begin to need to take those off in the underworld. So, you know, the shield that we had worn for 20 years involved um, volunteer labor and realizing that volunteer labor was wonderful but it didn't actually meet our community's needs. It didn't even meet our member owner and customer needs. And not only that, actually, we didn't even have member owners. We had this weird, like, you pay once a year and you get a discount at the cash register, which basically meant we were giving people money before we'd even made a profit, and we were increasing the prices of all of the items in the store, essentially so that the people who weren't um, discount club members were subsidizing the people who were discount club members. So in 2012, we went through a process where we adopted a new set of bylaws and we became a true patronage co-op where we instituted owner membership. And that was hard and scary. And during that time, we also shifted away from volunteer labor and we began instituting employees. So today we now have 18 employees and um, we're working towards living wages, but it's a slow process. So we were sort of giving things up along the way. And the other nice thing about the underworld is the idea of don't go it alone. So 
you have to find like a shaman or a guide. And our shaman, um, in part, was Thane, who came to us through the CDS Consulting Co-op. And then our general manager, who was new when I joined the board, um, Andrea Malloy. And she was adamant about connecting us to the broader world of co-ops. What is everyone else doing? And trying to figure out what of their learnings can we bring to Athens. So we gave up a lot of pieces of ourselves that felt a little bit scary and frightening, but we began to pick up new sort of like medicine and tools, including a point of sale system, which probably most people in the room have, but we didn't have until 2013. Um, and then we began to make our way back out into the broader world as a new, stronger, more authentic, um, and more relatable co-op to the time and space that our community was in. But I'll say, you know, in terms of courageous leadership and thinking about the hero's journey, you know, it definitely takes everyone being involved. It takes that association of folks and it's never done. So, you know, we were walking along and then tripped over um, the rock that involved daily being a vegetarian, perceived as a vegetarian co-op, and having to have the conversation among our now thousand owner members about whether or not we would carry meat. So I will save that for another time, but I'll just say that the cycle um, and the need for courageous leadership is ongoing. Thanks, Celine.